Good evening and welcome along to the NUFC 360 podcast. I'm your host, Stuart Montgomery, and tonight I have the pleasure of being joined by Matt, Max and Ez. How are you, gents? How are you all? How are you? Good. Yeah, very good. Good stuff. Glad to be back. Back at it. Um, thanks all for watching and uh, please get your comments as usual. Get those comments in and we'll get you involved as much as possible tonight um, and getting through the show. Tonight we're going to be discussing NUFC's FIFA 23 player ratings, the signing of Loris Carius and how the re- recent fixture break may affect the squad. So, without further ado, we'll crack on with the first topic of the night. Um, the FIFA 23 um, ratings were leaked, were leaked or released a couple of weeks ago or during the week. Um, and there was some discussion online, mostly on social media, about maybe Newcastle United's players being a bit lower than people would have expected, considering the form that the team was in from January last year. What I thought would do, gents, instead of me just randomly asking you how you feel about them, um, which we'll get to as we'll get through, is I'm going to give you a player, I'm going to give you his rating, and I want you to tell me what you think of that rating. Do you think it's too low? Do you think it's too high? Um, why or how do you think they've come to that decision and we'll just go round the grounds and Matt we'll start off with you Um, I'm going to go from top to bottom so this is our highest rated player uh, in the squad and it's Kieran Trippier Trippier, sorry, at 84 what are your thoughts on that? I feel as though that's probably the going the the actual writing that probably makes the most sense Um, Mm -hmm. I, I do feel as though Trippier could slide into any any team in the Premier League. Um, so I do feel as though an 84 is a fair representation of of where he is as a player. Um, whereas for the others, I'm not so sure. But if you compare the other full-backs in the league, I've saw Trent Alexander-Arnold at 87. Um, mm-hmm. And you look at... Raphael Varane, 84. You know, that kind of player, maybe getting on a wee bit, but a very good player yeah. and playing in La Liga. Yeah, I, I just feel as though um, if you compare them to Andrew Robertson or, or Trent in those similar sort of fullback positions, then just to be a few uh, ratings, well, rankings below, um, then I, I feel that's a fair, fair representation. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I completely agree. And I, I think, you know, despite, you know, Alex, Alexander Arnold having you know, not the greatest season defensively this year, you know, he's still a very, very good defender. And I don't think 87 is too high for him. So, no, I agree completely. I think that's a pretty. Pretty accurate rating. Um, Ezra Max, do you have, you know do you disagree with that? Do you think that's pretty spot on? Yeah, it's spot on for me. Yeah, eighty four makes sense. It does yeah, Max over you? Yeah, yeah I think I so. That's that. probably the, the only one I think that makes sense. Um, <laughs> we'll go for you as um, ASM is currently sitting at eighty one. This is an odd one. I don't know. I can see people falling on both sides of this. What do you think? I think 81 is generous, if I'm being honest oh, with you. Um, oh. I, I, okay. I mean, I, I'm a massive ASM fan. I, I really am. But given that Kevin De Bruyne is maybe the league's best player, he's at 91, right? Okay. He, he's streets ahead. But ASM doesn't have the sort of the output. He hasn't got the numbers to mm. justify more than, you know, somewhere in the early 80s. Um, you know, I, I, he just doesn't have the final product uh, consistently for someone at FIFA, whoever does these rankings, to say, hey, you know, we need to really push him up to that kind of mid-80s, late-80s and really show that he's an elite player. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, each each point is a massive jump. It's not, you know, it's, you shouldn't be flipping about that. The way they work these out, each point is a huge jump. To give you an example or a slight comparison, sort of another midfielder, you're looking at um, James Ward-Price is also at 81. I know he's not a centre midfielder, unlike ASM. Um 81 is he as good as him is he in the same ballpark well, you know he, he at least you has rather output, have right? Ward Price I wouldn't rather have out, out Ward Price but when you look at the, his output for Southampton how important he is then yeah. you can see the you can see the justification for it yeah I mean I, yeah I can say and gents you know Matt or Max would you disagree with that do you think it is too high or too low would you have it higher or do it lower possibly no, I think it's uh, quite fair because he if we, we would compare him to a player like maybe Wilfred Saha, who is uh, of a cl- club that's uh, like on the similar level level right now in the league. And uh, the 
are quite the same same kind of player with the skills and the flair. Only that size, olderness produced in Premier League over much more years. And I've played this game for so long now, so I know how they work. And they they only they you need to perform like two seasons in a row for to even get like a plus two rating. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, ASM hasn't done that, so he's been really on and off. They really like him to give him say, like special cards, like flaring nice cards. Uh, he's yeah. really loved in the community, but uh, yeah, 81 is, I think it's a fair uh, rating, to be honest. As how high could he go in your book? Uh, not a flare card, you know, like a basic base rating? Uh... Well, if you asked me that question like a couple of years ago, I would have said you could go up to the 91s, you know, could have, could become <laughs> one of the best players in the league. Um, but given that we're two years on and he's, what, in his mid-20s, I think his ceiling is each year lowering. Um, so yeah. maybe the 84, maybe 84, yeah. 83, kind of that, that sort of level. Yeah, I'd say 85, 86, perhaps. Yeah, I mean... And this is more of an overall question, and I'll ask it now because I'll forget to ask it if I don't ask it now. Um, in terms of the level, and this our top rating player is, is 84, and you know, the next jump down is three points down in, in, in ASM, and, and then we'll get to others as we go. You know, what do you think we should be aiming for as a number? I'm going to ask you this, Max, and I'm going to give you a player as well, but I'm going to ask you could you play a lot of FIFA? You know, in terms of a number for our squad as an average, it's not 84. I don't know what it is, but I know it's not 84. What would you say most of our players should be, you know, the median should be? Would it be an 84? Is it lower? Is it higher? What would your what would your sort of number you'd like it to be over the next couple of years? Obviously, we want it as high as we can, but realistically, where, where do you think it should be? Uh, yeah, the best teams, I think, is around... Uh, the, the, the rating would be approximately around 86 87 i think mm. uh they, they, they used to they did the, the fight the the attack the defense and midfield in three separate parts and then you right. based on the ratings you know you got 85 in defense 84 in midfield and 86 in attack and you know you add it together and get a number so uh, i would say for us <laughs> the goal because FIFA, but they also don't like to look at teams outside the big six and uh that's really frustrating for other fans. I know other uh, fans of other clubs in the Premier League don't get a lot of special cards to their for their teams because they usually like to give it to the big six clubs uh, because most pe- fans play want to buy from them yeah. for those clubs because there's have mm-hmm. the most most fans. Uh, so, but I would like to say maybe aim for a like a general. 84 type rating that would be good. Uh, West Ham are getting at that place right now because they've played in Europa League. You can see their players getting rises, getting up to an 84, and yeah. Bowen is up to 83. You know, they're gradually building their squad. We should aim at something similar, I think. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think it's a slight aside. I think they're the team that we should be competing with this year, just in generally, for whatever spot they're going for. They have a better squad than we do. They have certainly much more depth than we do at the moment. I think we should be aiming at that. And it's very exciting. Um, Max, I'll, I'll stay with you here for this one, but I'll open up the floor as well because, it, in my opinion, it's the most contentious one, and it's Bruno Guimaraes uh, with 81. What do you think of that, Max? Yeah, his uh, previous rating, I think, was 79 when he's playing in, in Lyon. So for him to get a plus two already, is a, I think it's a good sign. He only played in the Premier League for half a season. Uh, I know we think he's world-class, and he's, he is world-class, but uh, for the developers to... To give him that rating that we would want him to have, it's probably going to take, I would say, two years for him to get maybe an 85, 86. It also depends on how he does this season. But I think for now, 81 is quite fair. Fair, okay. Disagreements, agreements. Matt, as what about you? Uh, yeah, I think it's, I agree with the plus two part, but I do feel as though it's a bit harsh. Um, you know, he's a, he's a Brazil international who starts, and, and it's clear as day that he's probably the best player outside the t- top six. Um, and to say his passing is a 79, I'm not sure who's been doing this. Yeah. That's criminal. That is just yeah. criminal. No, I'd have to say, with my Newcastle head on, I'd probably say 85, 86, but um, without my Newcastle head on, I'd still say 85, 86. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Ez, what about you? 
Uh, well, I, I could say he wasn't very happy with the rating from what he uh, no, he was he not like a, a thinking no. emoji, um, which hopefully might motivate him. You know, I don't know if, yeah. if like that kind of stuff motivates players. Who knows? But, He's um, going to tear I, Bournemouth to shreds on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think um, what a difference like one number makes. Like if it was eighty-two, I'd say yeah, okay, yeah. But eighty-one, you yeah. feel like oh no, not quite. Um, so yeah, but well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a player. Um, Hoiberg for Spurs, good player. Really solid Premier League player. You know, started at Southampton, worked his way up. He's an 83. Okay, that's so well, that puts it into context then. That's just now, like, that's a complete Are you telling me Bruno. that he's better than come on, <laughs> catch yourself on. He's a good player. I don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking him, he's a good player. And I don't and the thing is I don't disagree with him being 83. That's fine. If that's the if that's the bar you're taking, but I, I just think that's that's way see, off that, mark for what should be you know that's my point they favor the big six teams and they yeah. give them better yeah. ratings had Hoiberg stayed at Southampton he would be a 79 or maybe yeah. declining to a 78 right now it's well, it's how they do these things and it's frustrating but it's how it well, is, this is that, okay, yeah and to bring back in James Ward-Price who is at Southampton you know who has a, as Ed has already said a really consistent output should he be about 83 is he Worse off than you know Pierre or sort of Hoiberg. I don't think he is. I think he's as as important, arguably more important to Southampton as more attributes than Hoiberg does. But a good player at that, you know, it's just it's a, a very contentious one. Um, yeah. We'll move away. I, I mean, my my, I agree with Matt. I think you should be talking 85, 86 at least. I think he's world class. I think he's shown it really quickly. But I also get Max's point, and in, in that I know how they work, and they won't do that. Yeah. So there's no point in us kicking and screaming. That being said, we're, we're pulling these through. I mean, I've yet to see the this information on FIFA's stuff. I've pretty much confirmed. I know the beta has been out for a while, and but they did say they would change some things. So these are sort of subject to change in some of them, and one of them is particularly subject to change because I've not seen this outside the beta, so I don't know what it is. But I'm just going to assume uh, it is what it is. Um, Can I just say something before we move on? Hmm? The thing that really upset me was that they took away two ratings from Pope. He went from an 83 well, to an 81. That's it, just the, weird. The, Funny enough, that's our next player. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll open the floor up to that, and you can start off if you want, Max. You know, as you say, he's gone down two to yeah. eighty-one. Is that then, Max, because he's got relegated? Is that their logic? I guess so, but but at the same time, he, he's had like the best save percentage in the league for like three, four seasons. So, and so it doesn't second, make sense. He's this, yeah, the third best uh, clean sheet ratio outside the top two goalkeepers last yeah. year. So they brought him down to. Doesn't make yeah. any sense. And um, yeah. the no, every, every, everyone loves him in the game because he's so good. And now they yeah. bring him down to. I don't get it. It's really weird. But yeah. yeah sorry, what's, what, what's the algorithm, guys? Because yeah, you just said it could be Israeli. I, we don't. We know that it's not a single person who's looking at each yeah. player on an individual basis. No. So there's some kind of weird algorithm out there, probably like yeah. the YouTube one. No one understands. Yeah. And yeah. It just puts out stuff that doesn't make sense. But you you would disagree with eighty one as. Would you? I mean, uh, it, relatively speaking to which other goalkeeper, because it really then depends if you can pull out what, uh, like, Allison is. Uh, I'm pretty comparison. sure Pickford is higher. Oh, okay, is then higher, absolutely. Yeah, that's a disrespect on Pope's yeah, name, for sure. That's, that's all we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you now, um, he is uh, just the one hair. Uh, he is 82. Yeah, exactly. He was able yeah, to do Fulham. Oh. Um, is it, no, he was maybe not goalkeeper. Sorry, I'm I'm pulling the wrong player actually. Um, yeah, I mean it's I don't really get it to be honest. Well, there's a good example for you, Emiliano Martinez for Villa, you know, the ex Arsenal goalkeeper, um, 84. What? Oh, okay. Like, this is yeah. It's the he's all right. It's just gone crazy. He's okay. I mean, there must be some. I mean, uh, with Crabsey in the comments says Pope got a downgrade because he was relegated. Performances didn't play a part. Um. I'd like to think that's the case, but then I suppose by that logic, what if you're injured for a whole season and your team gets relegated? Do you just get knocked down? You haven't played. But then maybe you are a worse player coming back. I don't know. So it's a strange one. Um, Matt, I'm going to come to you with, with a different player. Um, and it is Sven Botman with 80. What do you think of this one? Uh, I'll probably say that's quite fair, maybe. Uh, I'll probably say 81. I wouldn't go any higher than an 82. I just feel as though he's young. He's still got a lot of time to improve. That's a good that's a good rating to go off and work from. Um, 
you know, he's still only, what, 21, 22? So I feel as though oh, nice. he hasn't played in the Premier League before. It's still early days. Um, yes, he did a good job with Lille and he won the title with them. Uh, but it's a completely different league, isn't it? So I'd have to say that's pretty fair. Max, you might know this. Did he go down at all or up? I mean, when he won the title, what was his... I'm wondering what his Sorry. FIFA rating was that year. Sorry, who? I was... I was busy Sorry, Sven up. Botman. I'm just thinking this algorithm of when they won the title with Lille, clearly he's a title-winning team. I'm wondering yeah. what his rating was then. I don't know. So I'm, I I think it, I, I'm pretty sure he went up. Uh, they usually mm-hmm. do that because he got a good some good car set systems so I guess so right. sorry I just need to say something more in, on this goalkeeper <laughs> thing because I <laughs> okay. picked this shit up now because Aaron Ramsdale was a 74 rated the silver goalkeeper last yeah. FIFA yeah. now he's an 82 rated gold <laughs> rare keeper he's went up 8 ratings because of one save against Leicester City I swear to god this is so I hate this <laughs> so bad I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep keep going. I that's was, not. Uh, that's a that's a brilliant point. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you're here to make the points. Um, was yeah, was Isak I mean, on the list? By the way, was he on? The no, list? he wasn't. And that's no, what we don't no. know. That there's some. There's some we don't know at the moment. Um, so we're sort of waiting to see when when they'll be, be released. The yeah, <laughs> it was seven. No, it was eighty-one. I think in the beta, possibly. That's a that's oh, wow. pure that's memory. Well, I think he did go up maybe one. It was from 80 to 81 or something, around, which I'm um, all right. That's fine because it's sort of unproven over here. And so should dad. Uh, that's I'm okay with that. And uh, similar to Botman, it's the same. I'll do one more because I want to move on to the next topic. But this is yeah. one night again. I'm, I'm sort of pulling this from it's a bit of conjecture on our part or my part here because it's not been confirmed. But certainly in the beta, this was the rating, and it certainly was the rating last year. And I think it's the same as it was. And it's Joe Linton. And he was 75. Now, <laughs> I don't think anybody thinks that's right. There's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no one that thinks that's correct. But does anyone want to defend that or make a point on that? To why it might be 75? That might yeah, change. Uh, They'd have said yeah. this, it might change. I think it might change. <laughs> because that yeah. um, if you've got if you've probably gone off um pre- Norwich, I think it was the Norwich game. Was it the Norwich game? <laughs> yes. Oh, the, the Kieran Clark sending off. Yeah, it was. He would have been 75, but post Norwich, he would have gone in year. And where should he be? I suppose what I'm asking you. What, what, you know, give me, well, last thing we'll talk about here, just give me a number then of where you think he should be, um, Matt. 82, 83. 83. Okay. Max? Well, well, if I'm going to think like they do, I would say like a 70. 978 because if Bruno is 81, I don't think he's as good as Bruno. Uh, and if we think like they do, they should I think he should be like 79 because he got our player of the year. Uh, he changed yeah. position completely. Uh, so in my opinion, I gave him a 78 card and let him grow on that. But yeah, it, it goes against me to say it, but 79, 78, something right. like that. Yes. Uh, well, if Hoiberg's an 83, I'm going 96 for Joe Linton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Uh, yeah, I mean, if Hoiberg says 83, he's like 85, 86, he's far better than him. Um, which is daft to say, as Matt's point out, because of the Norwich match. But move on, did a lot on this. I thought it would. It was an interesting yeah. topic. Um, so uh, Newcastle um, uh, confirmed this week the sign of Loris Karius. Obviously, we'd all heard, or we had heard, it was pretty kept very quiet, I think. Um, Carl Darlo had an ankle injury, um, either in training or uh, I started this week, and Newcastle reacted really quickly um, and brought in the sign of Loris Karius, who was a free agent, um, so for nothing. Uh, and I suppose, you know, there's... A good bit of discussion going around this, you know, we, we all know the history of Carius and the infamous you know, Champions League final and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to start off as with you. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Feel free to elaborate on it. Is he better than Carl Darlow? Difficult, difficult question to answer because uh, he's barely played um, it, oh. since he's moved to Liverpool. I think in 2016, he's barely played. He had one season with Liverpool where he was quite prominent. And actually, if you look at his clean sheet ratio, it's not bad. Yeah. Uh, he barely played last year. Um, so it's really difficult to know. I think a lot of it will depend on his confidence. Mm-hmm. Gut feeling tells me he's a 
a, a more capable keeper than Kyle Darlow. Um, you don't get to Liverpool. You don't play Champions League finals. You don't play. You get to Liverpool, hit their radar by not being better than Kyle Darlow. Let's put it like that. But it does depend on his confidence. Um, a few people that I've spoken to is kind of a little bit uh, bemused at why we signed him. And they're like, well, you're better than this guy. Well, we don't know. We, this guy might be actually better than Nick Pope for all we know. G- genuinely, he might be. He played in the mm-hmm. Champions League final. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I think he's a good good enough backup. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd actually quite like to see him play like in the Cups and stuff to mm-hmm. give him a run out. Yeah. What kind of keeper? I agree he? with that. You, you mentioned those stats there. Um, for Liverpool uh, in the Premier League, he had 10 clean sheets in 19 appearances. That's really decent. You know what I mean? It's a 2017 18. Like, they're not not the team they are yet. I know the Klopp was Klopp's, probably Klopp's first year where they were starting to get really good, but it wasn't the year where they were absolutely, you know, cleaning house. Um, Champions League's, you know, played 13 games, six clean sheets in the Champions League. Six clean sheets. As you say, you do not do that if you're a crap keeper. You know what I mean? Um, um, I was going to say, I'm a little bit confused. We went, apparently, we went for Ben Foster. Uh, ahead of this guy, and I would, I, I, I think Ooh, this guy's sh- streets ahead. I think Ben Foster's mm. signed a deal with Spotify. He wants to be an entertainer. You know, we don't yeah. want an entertainer. We want a professional. Um, and this guy seems like he's, you know, quite a serious guy. Yeah, he, he does. He, he is serious. He likes his looks. A good-looking guy that he is. Seems to, he seems very uh, into his looks on Instagram. If you follow him, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. He obviously cares about things. Not sure. Um, Max, what you? Know, what are your thoughts on him? Do you, do you think it's a good signing? Are you pleased with it? Do you think he could usurp Darlow as a number two or, as Ez has mentioned, possibly even Pope as number one? What are your thoughts? Uh, I don't think he will usurp Pope. Uh, Darlow, possibly. I could see him being a more complete uh, kind of goalkeeper, as Ez alluded to, uh, than Darlow. Darlow is a really good shot stopper, <clears throat> as we've seen, uh, but he lacks a lot of the other stuff, which uh, Karius might provide I don't know I haven't seen play football since that Champions League final he like oh. fell into a black hole and disappeared for how many years it now has been <laughs> uh, so but I know before he went to Liverpool he had a really good season in uh, seasons in Mainz uh, which was why they signed him and he did a good job I remember that year because I when I think about it I remember everyone's been like he had a good year and then it, the final came and it all went like really bad and no one's seen him for four or five years. <clears throat> so I'm, uh, well, I don't think he will play that much for us, maybe in the Cups. Uh, but if he, yeah, he's probably on par with Darlow a bit better, I would say. But we will see. He will, he will hopefully not be in the goal too much because I want to see Pope there for as much yeah. as we can. I've, I've, a stat here I pulled up earlier, which is an interesting one, because what I was most interested in is how he is with his feet. I know that um, Pope's distribution is very good, throwing the ball. He's so quick at that. Like He constantly gets the ball and throws it out or gets it to his feet and gets the ball back. I guess the game running very, very quickly. I know how good he is getting down to his feet and making those saves. Um, this is just after the 2017-18 season, so after the Champions League, where he obviously had that, 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 that sort of mistake that led to basically led to him leaving Liverpool essentially and it's in terms of distribution Carius was sixth for open play distributions in the entire league so in that top quarter uh, and the most consistent to top with his feet in open play so just consistency didn't lose the ball made the pass with his feet that's a really good thing and something I don't think Cardarlo has is a good shot stopper Darlo and that's I, I, I will be so surprised well that's right I, I won't be surprised at all if Darius or if uh, Carius, sorry, overtakes Darlow as number two, whether he's happy to sit on the bench, I don't know. Maybe just happy to get his chance. I can really see that being the case. Uh, Matt, what about you then? Yeah, I feel like it's sensible. It, I mean, it come at a bad time. We're typical. We just let go of uh, the graph crease been out on, on loan, and all of a sudden our number two gets injured. Uh, don't get me wrong. If if the graph wanted to leave, that's that's fair. I don't want to play with the club who who doesn't want to stay, but. Um, I feel like they can't go wrong. You know, he's got he's got a lot of good experience. He's played in the Champions League final, as I said. Um, and it seems like he's happy to be number two as well. You know, he was I think he was six years and he was the number two for the majority of not all that time. Um, so he's used to playing back up and supporting his teammates. And I, I watched the interview when he joined and he spoke about he's there to, if, if, he, if he's not involved um, by starting, he's involved you know, in the back room and 
um, on the training pitch and helping his teammates and pushing Pope to be a better goalkeeper. Um, so I feel like it's a sensible and clever decision. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, Pope doesn't get injured. But if he does, then Carriest could possibly be uh, a good uh, filling for Cardano. He's only 29, so you know he's definitely a good number of years. He's just two or three, two years on Pope. He's a good number of years, and I know Darrell's far younger than that, but he, um, you know, he's, he's not. I for some reason thought he was a good bit older, but he must have been quite young when he played in that Liverpool team, which again shows you how you know he messed up. But he has a bit of bottle about him. He was able to do it. Um, Crabs him alone in the comments just before we move on. I said very interestingly, he's probably better than all our current keepers when he's at his best, which again I can't disagree with because as Ez has said, we do not know what he's fully capable of. Um and a short term day on a free, you know, seems to be good for everyone. And that's it. It's everybody wins here. There's no losers really, apart from maybe from Darlow, but then He's injured, so... Uh, okay, last co- uh, last topic of the night, guys. Uh, and it is basically about the break that we've had, and um, for obvious reasons, I won't go into now, that we obviously didn't play the fixtures the weekend. We have been confirmed that uh, Newcastle and are playing the weekend at home to Bournemouth. But with that extra week off, it did give some chance or an opportunity for some players who were injured to make it back to fitness or start to make it back to fitness. Um, and I suppose... As we'll start off with you then, you know, the, the break itself, um, do you think that it will help the squad in terms of bringing people back together or hinder the squad in terms of possibly break momentum, things like that? Is it a good thing or a bad thing that the players are able to sort of get back there? Well, I'm not quite sure we had momentum to break, well, to be fair, um, based, off of the, based off of the Palace game. Um, although you know the the, the, the one team was six. hard. One lost six. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah. I would I would say though that in hindsight, right? If you look at it in hindsight, Isak basically didn't train with the with the squad really. I didn't have a proper training session. Come in at an, Anfield. I think he went off the adrenaline. He went off instinct. He, he banged in a goal. Actually, banged in two goals. Um, and I think that that wasn't because he had trained with the squad and like instinctively knew what each other were going to do. Same could really be said for Crystal Palace. And you, I think you could see that transpire, that you kind of got lost in the game a little bit, um, just the pace of the game, understanding with his teammates. So I'm purely thinking about it from our new players' perspective and probably include Carrius in this as well, is that they've had this yeah. full kind of Eddie Howe experience with on the training pitch. Yeah. And I think we're going to be better for it um, come Saturday. Do you remember when Bruce was manager? Yeah, I try not no. to, but do you remember no. when he was manager? And I, I don't know about you, I used to dread international weekends, not because Newcastle weren't playing, quite frankly, it was a, a break, to be honest. It was very stressful watching them, but I used to dread them because I just knew that nothing would be happening on those weekends. No one was getting trained, there was no coaching being done, or if it was, it was negative. It just was... It was almost so counterproductive not having that time on the training feed. And since Eddie Howe has come in, this team has come in. Any time there's a break or a lull for whatever reason, it first happened whenever there was in January when there was COVID. There was a couple of COVID games and signs were able to join. A bit similar to this, you know. I, I was like, great. Like this is this is the more time they have on the pitch, the better. That's. I kind of think we're getting that, and I completely agree. The more time they have together, the more time. Um, Dan Byrne did an interview today, I saw on Twitter, I know that uh, we, we tweeted it out there recently, talking about the types of drills and routines that Eddie Howe does. And he says that every single day, every drill is different. And he's like, I, I have not ever experienced that. You have to bear in mind, Dan Byrne has just come from the current Chelsea manager, you know, best coach in England and all that. And I like I like Potter, but, you know, the, the press he got and, oh, isn't he brilliant and this, that and the other. And your dad Burns saying, like, this is the guy right here, Tim. So I think that's really positive. I completely agree um, with that. Um, Max, a slightly different question for you because I think we're probably on the same page there. In terms of, um, I think we'll, we'll just assume, I think we've had some Adam P exclusives um, saying that I think Bruno was playing a training. I don't know if we said of ASM, but let's just assume that ASM, Wilson and Bruno come back against Bournemouth. If not Bournemouth, then next game, but let's just assume they're back. We don't think it's unreasonable, to be honest. Um, out of the current squad, who would you like to see out of those guys come back straight into the lineup against Bournemouth or the next game? 
So who, who is undroppable out of those three? Is it, or is it all of them? Oh, I'd say... Um, I would say... Uh, Bruno is the first one I would say. I'd like to see. Uh, ASM, of course, as well, because he brings that uh, extra creativity we don't have, which we have seen. Uh, but for the tempo for a game at being able to control the midfield, I think Bruno is the most important part because we don't really we don't have a play like ASM as well, but we really don't have any play like Bruno. Uh, so I would say him. Uh, I would also like to pick up on the point S made about this like, settling in uh, on the training mm-hmm. pitch. It's also a factor of him off the pitch. You know, I don't know if maybe stayed at a hotel and uh, you know. Also for Botman as well, because they also quite arrived quite late in the win- window mm-hmm. to settle in in the city and you know find a home, uh, fly out uh, family and friends to like really settle in. That's an important part which we fans tend to forget sometimes, uh, mm-hmm. which we shouldn't because it's uh, it's important for the players as humans to have a comfortable environment to play and enjoy the football. Um, but back to your question, Stuart. Sorry. Uh, I would say the Bruno is the most important. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll ask you this as well for obvious reasons. You know, Wilson's fit, Chinese fit. Does he take Isak's place? I would say, oh, oh, this is this hurts me so much. Yes, I would say it does because he knows the system so well, and uh, I think coming off the bench, Isak would be a bigger yeah. uh, threat yeah. in that sense. If he doesn't mm-hmm. choose to play Isak on the right, which I, I'm still very sceptical about, but I'm yeah. not the manager, so it's not my decision to make. I, I've seen that a few mock-ups of formations that we would possibly play and Isak's on the right or the left, and they're shifting around. Ezra, Matt, I don't know if you've seen them. Is, is that something you would do? Would you try and shoehorn them both in? Or would you just, like Max has done, cast Isak aside completely? I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, don't be messing. Uh, well, you know, what do you think, guys? Um, yeah, I thought about it a lot the past week. Um, I feel as though you need to get them both in the team. I know Eddie Howe will have his systems and that what he prefers to play. And I get this point completely. Um, but I, I just feel that at the front three, the weakest part is probably not the hand side. And I, I feel like Callum Wilson is too good of a striker to drop out. And I feel like he's too good of a striker to, to keep out also. So I, I'll try and find a way where you can integrate all three of them. Uh, I'm not sure how Eddie Howe would do that. You could, like, you could. You could push him out to the right, but he probably isn't. He probably isn't his best position. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm not sure he'd do that. It's yeah, like so a, a Denver Bar Papi Cisse type situation going on here. We're trying to shoehorn shoehorn players into formations. Um, as far as I understand, um, from a lot of what the kind of the the local journalists and people out in Sweden who followed uh, Isak's career. They don't see him as anything other than a striker, a central striker. Um, and so uh, for me, I think just play play the new guy. If we're going to manage Wilson's injuries, this is how we do it. We bring him off the bench. We plays a bit part. If we keep starting him, he's going to keep breaking down. So for me, this the new look Newcastle is Isak starts, Wilson comes off the bench. It's so difficult. I mean, it's such a lovely problem to have. Isn't it? It's great. Like yeah. it's such a really nice problem compared to where we were last year. Um, like do we play AS- ASM up front or do we play Jeff Hendrick up front? You know that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> it's really boring. nice. I, oh. I, I don't know. I'm 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 conflicted between Ed and Max. To be honest, I, I think. I think what Eddie will do is what Max has said. I think he'll start with Wilson. I think he loves Wilson. He loves the system and he'll stick with what he knows and he'll bring on Isak the way he brought on Bruno. He had to start Isak for obvious reasons because Liverpool and Palace, he'll bring him on. Whether I'd like that or prefer as is, I don't know. I just, news always better. And it's just always better, you know. So, I, and he's been so good. So, I don't know, a lovely problem to have. Um, we will see what happens. Um, really quickly to finish, guys. In terms of, and we're, we're moving into preview territory here, but I'm going to do it anyway. I just want to get your, your opinions very quickly on a quick scoreline for Saturday uh, afternoon. I were the only three o'clock kickoff, isn't that right? It's just us yeah. at three yeah. o'clock. Nice. The, wor- 
Very good. Um, a quick scoreline prediction for Saturday at three. And Matt, we'll start with you. What do you think? Three now. Oh, lovely. Nice. Uh, Ez, what were you? 3 0. Max? 4 1. Ah, oh, fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> 4 1. Uh, yeah, I'm so, I don't know. Again, so burnt. I think, yeah, I think 3 0. We, we, we're, we're so due giving someone an absolute hiding, like an absolute yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just so overdue. It. You know, didn't have enough for us. We really should have done it. You could make the argument against other you know games we've had this season we've been due and it's just not ran for us I think we're due to give someone a pelted and if we're going to do it to someone it probably should be Bournemouth they are, I mean, are they the worst team in the league they probably are I mean Liverpool absolutely pumped them I don't know I think, Le- um, Le- I think Leicester are the worst team at the moment well yeah okay fair <laughs> enough I, you know, I won't delve into that but I don't know about Rodgers whether he can last uh, much longer but we shall, we shall see. Um, guys, thank you so much for your comments tonight. Uh, it was a really good discussion and really, really enjoyable. Um, uh, folks in the comments, thanks so much for helping us along tonight and all those watching, thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and help us grow. And we will see you again uh, this time next week. Thanks for watching. See you. Thank you.